What's up everybody, Estas here, and in today's video I wanted to show you guys my M1 Finance portfolio and how I have it currently constructed as a dividend income portfolio paying me that juicy old passive income. So I want to show you every one of my individual positions, all the cost bases, as a very brief reason on why I'm investing in those particular companies and stocks and ETFs that I'm actually looking to invest in in the future here because right now it's most mostly a dividend portfolio, but I'm actually eyeing up some growth stocks that I want to see at lower prices before I pounce at that opportunity to add them into my portfolio. And you guys will see building a portfolio takes a lot of patience, which is why the portfolio hasn't been changing much over the past couple of episodes of this series. But hopefully you guys can find value in how I'm investing, how I'm explaining things, and you can take tips and tricks and put that into your own, put the those tips and tricks into your own investment strategy. That's kind of the whole entire goal of this series. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and take a look at the M1 Finance Portfolio Series playlist, which is linked down below in the description box. So overall, guys, let's just get right into it. Overall, my portfolio right now is $198.86. Well, that's the amount that I have invested in the market. If you look up here and look at my cash, I have $205.30 in cash right now, bringing my total portfolio to about $400 to $405 um, of portfolio value. And you, you may be asking yourself, and you may be looking at these ratios of cash to invested money, it's about a 50-50 split. You may be asking yourself, so you have 50% in cash right now. That means you're waiting for deals out there. That means you're waiting for the markets to drop a little bit. And you're correct if you're thinking that. That's exactly why I have cash on the sidelines right now because I want to buy more stock in companies when the stock prices go down. And right now with the trade war, with you know the economy slowing down, with Trump and president of China, they're going at it with tariffs, retaliation, all these different things that are going on. That's putting pressure on the stock market that I personally think will really last for the next couple of months. So I'm building my cash position, guys, to pounce on these opportunities and stocks that I think are going to fall in the next couple of months that I'm hoping will fall over the next couple of months. So let's get into kind of the gain right now. Overall, my portfolio has lost $5.09. It's down about 2.76% since its inception back on the 2nd of July in 2019. So over the past two months, really the portfolio has gone down in value of about 2.76%. And if we go down to see the individual slices in my portfolio, you can see I'm only owning six different pieces of assets right now. Six assets right now, 3M, Johnson & Johnson, AT&T, Altria, Alibaba, and VEA, which is a developed markets ETF. So if we go back and take a look, you can see right now 3M is heavily weighted in my portfolio. And honestly, guys, this is not going to last too long. It's just like this right now because 3M, in my opinion, is at 52-week lows. It's pretty undervalued here, so I've been buying it. But overall, I want this to be around a 10% um, position or 10% stake in my portfolio probably in the next couple of months. But right now, as the portfolio portfolios being built, it's around a 24% stake. That's a pretty big stake um, from one stock in the portfolio. But again, as the portfolio grows, it's going to go down to around 10%. The next biggest position right now is Johnson & Johnson at a 22% actual weighting um, in terms of my pie here, in terms of my portfolio. The next one we see here is AT&T at an 18.4% weighting. Altria ticker symbol MO is the next one at a 15.9% rating. Alibaba is the next one at 10%. And VEA, which is a developed markets fund, is the next one at about 9.5%. And now to quickly get into why 
why I like these as investments right now. 3M and J&J, &J, it's very similar. Both of these are dividend kings, meaning they've been increasing their dividends for 50 plus years. What that also tells us is they've been increasing their dividends in recessionary periods. So me being a dividend investor, partly a dividend investor here, I want my cash flow to be safe even during an economic downturn. And these two companies have track records of providing that safe cash flow and that increase in cash flow during recessions. If we go a bit closer and take a look at 3M here, you know, we can see right now market caps $92 billion, PE at about 18.8, dividend yield is a nice juicy 3.6% and their payout ratio is around 40 to 50%, roughly that area. So even though, you know, their earnings are under pressure right now, that's no doubt, right? E3M has been slowing down as a company over the past couple of years. And let's say the trade war with China worsens, that's probably going to hurt 3M even more because they do have exposure in China. But let's say their earnings start to tank even more. What that lower payout ratio provides is the safety of them actually paying out that dividend. Because let's say their, their payout ratio was 90% and their earnings took a big hit and their payout ratio goes over 100%, meaning they're paying over 100% of their earnings in a dividend. That's not safe, right? But let's say their earnings drop a bit and their payout ratio goes from 40 to about a 60%, whatever it may be, 65, 70% even. That still provides that buffer where even when earnings are under pressure, they can still end up paying us shareholders that juicy old dividend that we like. And if we go back now to Johnson & Johnson, you guys can see Johnson & Johnson, a 3% yield right now, 21.5 PE and a $338 billion market cap. So this is a bigger business than 3M, but it also provides that safety and cash flow, the lower payout ratio. So let's say earnings took a hit, in the recessionary periods, that payout ratio will go up to 50, 60, 70, whatever it may be, but they can still end up paying that out, which is very healthy in my opinion. And although my 3M position right now is down 4.4% since I've bought and J&J is down about 1.7%, that's not going to deter me from adding more to those positions. So I'm going to add more over the next couple of months because I do want to build a position in two dividend kings that grow their dividends very beautifully and that increase that cash flow quarter after quarter, year after year. So the next stock you're seeing here is AT&T. And this is actually the only green one that I'm uh, up right now. The only green stock in my portfolio. I'm up about $1.87, about 6% on this position. It's about 18% of the portfolio. And AT&T right now, market cap $256 billion, PE 14.8 or 14.6 rather. Their dividend is why I'm I'm investing in them right now in the future of 5G. I'm really liking the future of 5G for this company. And honestly, I've been watching charts. I've been watching the stock market very religiously recently. AT&T has been doing very well despite the volatility in the markets. And that dividend yield of 5.8%, although it's not growing as heavily as fast as J&J &J and 3M, AT&T provides that larger starting yield. So if you want to have money right now investing, you know, you want that 6% right now, despite it not growing as much as some of these other dividend stocks, you know, AT&T is a very good stock to own in my opinion. So if we look at the activity here, you guys can see I actually got a dividend on the 1st of August from AT&T of 30 cents. And I also put in $100, actually, I forgot to mention this, into the portfolio today. So I'm loading up on that cash again, like I said, to add more money to this portfolio. So taking a look at the next stock, this is the most red stock in this portfolio. That is Altria, ticker symbol MO. Right now, I'm down $3.16 on this stock, down almost 10%. And this will panic a lot of people. Oh my goodness, I picked the stock. It's down 10% now. What do I do? Well, you guys can see here, you see this little line? That means, or these little two lines, 
lines. That means I have a pending buy. I'm actually buying more Altria right now, uh, a $15 uh, position here, buying more. I believe it's going to be at around $44 on Tuesday, maybe $43. That is where the trade is going to execute, and that's going to bring my average share price from $48 down to probably like $46, maybe $46.50, roughly that area. And overall right now, Altria and a lot of the tobacco companies that they've been seeing a lot of heat recently. We actually got some news that Altria is potentially merging back with Philip Morris International. And for those of you guys that don't know about that, in 2008, they were actually already one company. And then in 2008, they split off and Altria took over the U.S. And then Philip Morris kind of took over all the other markets internationally. Now with them potentially coming back together, I think this could be very good for Altria, to be completely honest with you guys. And we see here the dividend yield right now, just like AT&T, this is more of a starting dividend play. The dividend right now is a 7.59%. This is an insane dividend, and they actually just increased their dividend. I believe it was a week or two ago, which is awesome for us dividend investors, for us people that like seeing the increase and the growth of the dividend. So guys, we all know at this point, if you're buying a stock at a high price and then the stock price falls and you buy more, that second position that you're buying at a lower price, the dividend yield is going to be higher because as the stock price falls, the dividend yield goes up, which is why I'm buying more Altria and that's going to put it up a bit higher in terms of my actual target um, in the uh, in the um, you know portfolio, but that's okay because I like the prices right now. I think tobacco is going to swing back up here in the next year, two years, three years, whatever it may be. Future prospects with Jewel and the marijuana stake in company Kronos. I really like that as well. So Alibaba, this is really easy and simple to, uh, to say. It's the best company out of China, right? I want to have some Chinese exposure. Right now, my average share price is $174, $20 in this position um, at about 0.11 shares. PE is 29, but it's a bit higher of a PE because it's a growth stock. So this is a stock that I'm holding from China. Their revenues are exploding. Profits are exploding. And I th and I just honestly see a lot of potential in this one over the next coming years. And I feel comfortable holding this one in my portfolio long term. The next one is an ETF to develop markets. The Vanguard FTSC Develop Markets ETF to be precise. And we're down $0.96 right now. We're down 4.8% on this particular position. Position. The dividend on this one's nearly 3%. The expense ratio is low, which is what I look for in ETFs. 0.05% is very, very good. And the assets under management, $72 billion. And honestly, guys, this is a play to get out of the U.S. a bit. This does not include the United States. This includes other areas um, that are developed and that are growing, right? So I want to have some international exposure in this portfolio. And honestly, I'm keeping it between between 5 to 10% of the portfolio and I, and I want to actually get Alibaba maybe to about like 6 to 7% of the portfolio right now it's about 10% but again portfolios take time and over the next couple of months those averages are going to get where I want them to be so that's kind of it right now in terms of the portfolio update again I'm going to continue adding money to this I want to get it up to a couple of thousand of dollars in the next couple of months that's the goal of this portfolio and some stocks that I want to buy in include Facebook and Microsoft and maybe even Apple if it gets to a right price to the right price and of course there's some other ones as well but the three main ones that I do want to start implementing are those three ones that I talked about because right now the valuations on those they're a bit expensive they're a bit high up in their stock chart and I like buying in when stocks are a bit cheaper so those are on the watch list, and I'm going to be adding to those here in the next couple of months. Hopefully, if the market sees a bit more pressure, me, 
I like it when the markets go down. You should like it as well because you can get stocks at lower prices. I don't get why people love the markets up, up, up all the time. I love that too, but if the markets are going up, up, up all the time, you can't really build too strong of a position in a particular stock or an ETF or whatever it may be. Um, that's just my honest opinion. So I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. If you guys actually want to sign up to M1 Finance. There's a $10 link down below in the description. If you sign up, you get $10. I also get $10. So that's pretty cool, right? And you have to fund $100 to get that $10. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on this portfolio on M1 Finance in general? And consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me, guys. So I appreciate all of you watching out there. It means a lot to me. Peace out.